So one of the questions I get almost nonstop is how do I find my art style? Jazz hands. I've been thinking a lot about what an art style is and I think I would define it as a collection of the artist's inspirations and their skill level and skill set and their personal lazy tendencies that, you know, influence their art and that's all collected inside a visual form. And you'll notice by that definition, anyone who draws has an art style. I assume when they ask this question, what they really mean is how do they improve upon the art style that they already have? So I've come up with four, actually ignore what I'm saying. It's actually a five step process. <laughs> Cue the tutorial. Hello. The There's no way to move forward unless you know where you're at. So step one. So what I want you to do is just draw a character without looking at any references just put down something on the paper and that is your art style. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to pretend that this is my art style so that I can show that you can literally start from anywhere and use these tips and improve. There's my, my art style. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't he a cutie? Whatever you've drawn, this is your art style. Whether you like it or not, it's yours. You can let it evolve slowly with you over like time and years or we can take steps to improve it. Both ways are equally valid, but I'm going to talk about today how to consciously adapt and improve your art style. I've been drawing and forming my art style for about 10 years, and I've noticed some things that have happened over that time that I can condense and abbreviate into some easy to follow steps. So we've completed step one. We've put our art style down on paper and we can see it and it's represented in front of us and it's perfect and it represents your current skill level and like the things that have inspired you up until this point. And if you're comfortable with the way this looks, you can skip the rest of the video. <laughs> if not, that's okay. That means you have an eye for seeing the flaws in your own work and that can definitely help you improve at a faster rate and continue to push yourself in the future. So how can we take our art style to the next step? So now we're going to hone that desire to improve our art and use it to our advantage. For this, we're going to look back at step number one. So the drawing you just made, and we're going to look at it and analyze it and figure out what about this drawing needs to be improved and don't say everything. No, 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 no. We're going to look at one specific thing that we see as the most pressing and important thing to improve. For me, looking at this, honestly, I like Emma, <laughs> but I think I'd like to take my art style in a direction that has a bit more form to it because this little guy is looking very thin. <laughs> For you, you may want to improve the way you draw eyes or the way you draw hands or legs or things like that. Just try and pinpoint one specific element. For me, it's going to be form. We're going to redraw our picture from number one and really hone it in and try to improve that element that I want to improve, which is form. So his head already has a lot of form, but I want to give his body some more dimension and form to it. So I'm going to just thicken up these shapes basically, and maybe even give him some feet. So whatever you've drawn for step two is what you're able to achieve just by thinking about what you needed to improve and applying it to your art but you may have realized that there's a better way to do this. References! Which leads us to step three. Let's look at real life. Art is a representation of real life, especially if you're drawing people like we are today. So don't be afraid to look at the source. If you're drawing people, look at people. If you're drawing houses, you'd look at houses. Back in the height of like the deviant art days, there was this really weird stigma about using references. You'd often see like in the description of a drawing that someone had posted, no reference used or without reference as if that was some kind of achievement and that looking at references was somehow cheating. I'm not telling you, you have to use references to improve, but Actually, yeah, it's gonna help you improve way faster. Okay, like just, just do it. <laughs> so we're gonna need some references. Here I've printed out some references of some people. I was gonna say all different shapes and sizes, but they all kind of look very similar, don't they? Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to look at these and apply them to our art. What about real life is different from our art? Even the most cartoony of art styles reference real life in some way. So there's nothing wrong with studying the human body and looking at it and figuring out what it looks like, you know? So what I'm going to do is redraw one of these references, situate it here and so what we're going to do is we're going to try and redraw that reference take a look at it here 
So one thing I'm picking up on that I'm looking at real life that's different from what I drew here is that I drew the neck the exact same width as the body, kind of like I'd done in number one and number two, the neck is the same width of the body. But if we look at real life, we'll notice that the neck is much skinnier than the shoulders. So I'm going to apply that to my art style here. And we'll notice that I'm missing a lot of elements that a human body has like ears. So we can add some of those and maybe a nose and hair too, why not? Let's give him this guy's hair. And now that we've started adding form to our character, there's room to add clothes. So we might as well do that. So you'll see there's a bit of an evolution here. We had our original art style, we added some form to it, and now we're looking at real life and adjusting what we thought of as form and applying it more of a real life spin to it. And the more often you do this and the more times that you do this, you're going to pinpoint different things that you notice, like maybe the way wrinkles happen on a shirt or the way fingers fall in your hands and like the way you can bend feet and different things. So every time you do this, you're gonna pick up on some more things. And so I definitely recommend doing that over and over and over again. However, if you're looking at your number three and it's not really seeing the improvement that you want and you're having a hard time recreating that reference onto paper, don't worry, <laughs> just keep practicing. But something you can try in the meantime, which I think will be very helpful. Let me get this out of the way is instead of printing this out in um, full color or grayscale as I did, you can print it out at 30% opacity. This time I accidentally did it in color, but I'm not gonna reprint it again. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Anyway, now you'll see all the people on this page are lighter. The whiteness of the paper is showing through a little bit more and a really good exercise you can do after you've printed it out at 30% opacity is trace over these characters. And one thing you can do is, you know, trace the outside of them like this and try to like add some muscle memory and realize what the shapes are. But what I would prefer to do and what I would recommend is to look for the shapes inside the characters. You can look for circles and squares and of course the line of action. Where's the weight of the character? What I like to do is look for the non-generic looking shapes like a wobblerkle <laughs> or a squiggler and just build your character from there. What do these shapes make you think of? And anyone who looks at them can see a different shape. It's kind of like looking up at a cloud. But try to break it down and simplify it. And you can even draw a line across where the facial features are so you can get an idea of where those lay on the face or the ears compared to like the eyes and things like that. And you can just keep doing this. It's quite fun. <laughs> And this will really help you understand like the structure of the human body and how you in particularly will break it down. And just keep doing that until you get a pretty good grasp. Like try using different shapes, like a triangle, circles for the knees and things like that. And try to be soft and squishy with your lines. Oh, this is a, oh, I love this pose because you can see the bottom of the shoe. And you can see every time I do a different pose, I'm seeing different shapes in the arms and the legs because of the way the character is bent up. Bent up. <laughs> I guess how the pose is laid out would be a better way to say that. And this is really, really fun if you're bored and don't know what to draw as well. <laughs> you can try making the skeleton as well shapes do you see in all the different body parts? So there I've done uh, four of these and you can see I'm finding the different shapes and the way the body and the character is laid out. So now that I've done that, I'm going to give this guy another go and try to use these shapes that I found, like maybe this triangle or this wobblerkle. So we know, let's do our line of action here. It's just gonna sit there pretty stiff. <laughs> So we have our circle for our head. Don't forget the ears. We know the ears line up with the eyebrows, at least they have with the characters we were looking at. Not everybody's the same, of course. Let's use that wobblerkle. So you'll see after I have traced these references and found those shapes inside the human body, I can now apply those to my art and you'll see the difference, like the shoulders now are wider than the hips. They're not that straight stick man that we started with. And there's a little bit more form and volume to our character. And even the face changed a bit here. I um, went in a bit more of a realistic direction with the proportions of the face. We lost that perfectly round shape that we had before. 
Our hands are still sloppy blobs, but <laughs> you know, baby steps. Even paid attention to where some of the wrinkles were and applied that to our art as well. So you can see how our art style is evolving slowly over time here. So yeah, looky there. I would call that improvement, especially since step one. If you aren't seeing any improvement with your art, stick around step three for a little bit longer. Um, you're basically training your wrist and you're getting that muscle memory and you're understanding the shapes and you're learning, you're teaching yourself these different things. And that can definitely take time. So there's no shame in that. Take your time. Luckily art's fun. So enjoy the process. So what could possibly be step four? Steel? But isn't that plagiarism? Yeah, step four is steal like an artist. But if you're looking at your art and you're still not thinking that you have an art style, what you really mean is that your art doesn't look like so-and-so's art. And I hate to break it to you, but um, you're not so-and-so and you never will be. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. The world is made of many people and many different art styles. And that makes it the fun and creative and diverse place that it is. I mean, imagine if everyone just drew the same stick man over and over and over again. <laughs> Like no different colors, no variations. Museums would feel more like torture chambers. But maybe you're looking at some artists you follow on Instagram and you just wish you could draw a little bit more like them and you're feeling an urge to copy them. Why don't we figure out the right way to do that? So here are some artists that I follow on Instagram that I really, really like. And of course I will have their information linked in the description. Definitely go check them out. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous art. Ooh. And you'll see when you look at this, there's many different things that make up an art style, not just the basic drawings of it, but like the width of the line art used or the style of coloring or the medium used for coloring. There are many different things that go into an art style and make it up. I'm obviously focusing on the basic drawings of it. <laughs> so I'm not going to worry about mediums or variations in um, the way of line arting or coloring your drawing. You might have heard that saying, um, good artists borrow, great artists steal, which I Googled it and it's accredited to Pablo Picasso, but no one knows if he actually said it. But basically it comes down to that there's nothing that is completely original. And the thing that you think is creative is inspired or stems from something that was created before it. So to steal like an artist doesn't mean to plagiarize as it may sound, but it means to study and to transform what you see that was created by someone else. And then you transform it into something that is new and your own. So that's what we're going to do next. A good way to do this is to find an artist that you really, really like. So I'm just gonna pick one of these. Let's go with Sophie Scribble and uh, we're going to pinpoint one thing we really like about their art style and what I like. We like the way that the feet and the hands are really small compared to the head and they sort of like taper down into a point. I think that's really, really cute. I would like to incorporate that into this art style that we've got going on is we're going to look at it, but we're not going to stare at it. So what, what did I say in my head? Oh, well, I like the way the hands and the feet are smaller than the body. I've put that into words. Now I can flip it over and I can't see it anymore. And now I'm going to try and incorporate those elements into my own art style. So we've got our head, we've got those shapes that we learned from using a reference, our wobblerkle. Actually, it's more like a trilerkle. I'm drawing this way bigger than that because I'm just terrible at drawing things the same size more than once, but that's fine. We all have our flaws. <laughs> And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate what I liked about Sophie Scribble's art, and that is make the hands and the feet really small. And every time you draw your art style, something will probably change about it. And if you like it, you can keep it. And if you don't like it, just go back to the way it was. It's your art style and you get to make those decisions. So you'll see every time I draw him, he's gonna look a little different. So we want those little tiny hands like so. And then we need the little tiny feet as well. So we'll taper them down to a little point. Some wrinkles. Oh, I forgot the suspenders. And if we look and flip this over and we look back at Sophie Scribble's art, we'll see this drawing doesn't look like they, it doesn't look like a direct copy. We just took a little bit of an element of their art and applied it to our own. And we can continue to do that with our other inspirations like this one. So something I really like about their art style is the way they draw ears. And if you look at it, they're very circular. 
And in some of their other illustrations, you can usually see both ears at the same time. And that's something that's really cool about their art style. And then the way they draw ears is they have the big circle and then they have like a J shape and that makes the ear. So now that I've put that into words, I can kind of visualize it in my head. I want to flip it over so I don't see it anymore. And then I'm going to apply it to this art that we've already made. Those big round ears like that. <laughs> well, that's cute. I love it. And again, if we flip this back over, it doesn't look like it's a direct copy of their art style. It's just one little element that we stole and we made it our own. This is Schmo Draws. And I've always really loved how um, fluid and expressive her poses and her characters are. So I'd like to incorporate that into our art style since it's still looking a little stiff, kind of run out of room on this paper. <laughs> so again, we're using those shapes that we learned from the reference. And I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a line of action that's a bit more squaggly so that his pose will be more squaggly. We have to follow that. Again, those tiny feet that we ripped off Sophie Scribble. And every time I draw this, I kind of get a little bit lazy about certain things that I really liked and I kind of just, draw them softer or quicker and you'll see these faces look very different even though they have the same elements and that's because my own wrist movements are creating different things that are differentiating me from other artists because they're my own little lazy tendencies and you may have noticed on the interwebs <laughs> you'll see like an art style that looks so similar to another artist that you followed that it's almost like assuredly copied you know what i'm saying <laughs> and i'm not talking about the people who trace that's completely different Ooh. the people who like copy almost directly from one specific other artist um i think that usually happens among newer artists who haven't really been around as long and they only have that one inspiration and they think to be an artist they have to draw exactly like that person to be considered good because that person has so many more followers than them and they think if they draw exactly like them they'll get those followers and i think that's a very immature mindset and you can look at this artist's work and you can see that each element of their drawing is almost completely copied from another artist but even though they've copied every single element it's obvious that this drawing wasn't made by the original artist that they're copying it from and i think there's a lesson in that because it means no matter how much we try to copy someone there's still going to be those little spins on it and that are something specific to the artist's hands so even when you're copying someone it's going to have a little spin on of it that's yours and that is inherently your own and I'm mentioning this because I want to tell you to not just copy one person. You need to research, you need to look into all these different artists and keep your eye open to different artists and inspirations that can influence you in their own way. The more art we expose ourselves to, the better our own art style is going to get because even if we're not directly looking at another art style and trying to pinpoint what we like about theirs and applying it to our own, the people that were following is still going to influence our art in little subconscious ways and that's never going to be a bad thing <laughs> even though you're copying elements of their art style again it doesn't look exactly like their art style it's still inherently your own because you're not just tracing it you know i'm also not copying every single element of their art style i'm just taking little bits of it and applying it to our own and when you mismatch a bunch of different artists together like an element or two from each of them, you can create something that's entirely new and it avoids you looking like you're just a cleared shell version of Jackson Pollock. So even though I copied from Sophie Scribble, it doesn't look like their art. And even though we took elements from Anna Kaddish's style, it doesn't look exactly the same. It looks like something specifically our own. And then when it came to Schmo Draws, we didn't really take any element from it. it we more took inspiration from the softness and the fluidity of her poses and we were able to come up with that but again it doesn't look like exactly like their art style it's our own does that make sense i'm not telling you to copy i'm telling you to steal but not plagiarize it's different and i'll even mention that you can do the same thing you did in number three if you're having a really hard time recreating an element from one of your favorite artists you can always Print it out at 30% opacity and trace it out 
I definitely recommend printing it out at 30% opacity instead of just tracing it with another piece of paper on top of it because if you trace it really well and it looks good and there's like no trace of the old artist there and you trace it and it looks really good, you might be tempted to post it online, which don't do, okay? <laughs> And then you can get that muscle memory and learn those shapes that this specific artist uses. Again, trace it out. What are the shapes you see in this artist's style? And you can study this and figure out the shapes and pay attention to how does this differ from when we traced real life references. Look how big those pupils are, isn't that cute? You can even try to put your own spin on it. Like their eyebrows are way up here. What if we drew the eyebrows we've been drawing? How does that look on this style? Isn't that kind of funny? <laughs> Add some of your own elements to it. It's definitely just a fun exercise. It's not, we're not going to be posting these online. This is just for study. There you go. And because I printed it out at 30% opacity, you can still see the original drawing there. And now I can't really post this online because it'll look like I traced it because I did. Because I remember back when I was like six or seven and I was tracing little Pokemon drawings out of my Pokemon books. <laughs> like we all have to start somewhere and it's actually really good for teaching your wrist these specific shapes. That's why I don't really frown upon tracing. I just don't think you should pass it off as your own because obviously it's not. <laughs> Back to the lesson. <clears throat> Class. So what I wanna do is take all of these different things that we've learned and I'm going to apply it to our very first drawing by redrawing it right next to it, which is, I guess, step five, redraw. This is a good way to track your progress and see what you've learned in that time. So I'm keeping in mind the form that we added, the shapes that we learned from looking at real life, and then the different elements that we stole from the artists that inspire us. So I know heads have like a circle-y shape, that round head, our squircle. Those big ears, spenders. Don't forget those tiny feet from Sophie Scribble. Clean up the face. There's a little too many lines in there. Color in the hair. Make it look separate from the body. And it's always good to experiment with different things. It'll definitely influence your art style as well. Don't be afraid to just try something even though it might look bad. Little hands. Some wrinkles. There we have it. Does that look like improvement to you? <laughs> Not too shabby. And you can do this for any element of your drawing, like hands or legs or ears. Like you can go follow all these steps for just one specific element as well, not just the whole overarching art style. So there we have our new art style. Um, we've mixed elements from our favorite artists or inspirations. We've also increased our skill level and our knowledge of anatomy and shapes. And we've learned and as well as our little lazy tendencies have been applied and our like little inaccuracies, they're all enveloped in this specific art style and it's created something that's original and new and belongs to us. Look at that. It's not a direct copy of anyone, it's ours and whatever you've drawn is yours. So there's my five um, steps to uh, finding your art style. If you've made it all the way through to the end, guess what? go back to step one and go again. Like that's how an art style is. It's ever changing and constantly evolving. And if you want to just take some steps to improve it, you can start back at step one or just continue drawing and let it evolve naturally. Yeah, so rinse and repeat <laughs> until you die. Anyway, I wish you all best of luck with your art styles. I know you can do it. And don't ever feel ashamed for where your art style is at this point in time. It's going to evolve and where it is now is exactly where it needs to be. But if you want to take it the next step and begin to improve, you can follow some of these steps and just enjoy the process. You don't have to constantly be improving to be an artist. Art can also just be a little hobby when you come home from your job at the nuclear power plant, you know? It's just, art will always be there and that's what I like about it. All you need is a pencil and a paper and you've got hours of enjoyment. <laughs> but if improvement is what you're looking for, I gave you some uh, steps to do that as well. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Best of luck with your art styles and I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.